you take us back to the beginning? How did you discover your passion for the arts and storytelling? Yeah, I mean, um, way back in the beginning, probably. I mean, I, as as long as I can remember, I always did uh, did theater as a kid. And um, my first production was as a tree in The Wizard of Oz. Uh, I think I was like six years old. And um, it's just always been what I've what I've done and what I felt like was my strong suit. And I love love being a part of a rehearsal process and all that. Um, so I've, I've known for quite a while. And then when it got around time to like senior year of high school and everyone was deciding what they were going to do, I was like, I can't, I can't like live with myself if I don't give this a shot. So, so I, so I did. And, um, and yeah, my, my dad always tells us one story of um, when I was a little kid, he was like tucking me into bed and we had just watched a movie or something. And I said, dad, I want to be that. I think it was like a superhero movie. He's like, you want to have superpowers. So, and like, even as a little kid, I understood like, no, I want to like, like play that. I want to mm-hmm. like t- play pretend and, and be that. So, so yeah. You know, as, as you've made the transition from the stage to now the screen, what has that process been like and how have those experiences lent themselves to one another? Yeah, that, that's a good question because a lot of people ask that. A lot of people, because you, you go and see a stage performance and everything seems so big and so yeah. so dramatic. And there's a lot of, of teaching too where they talk about like bringing us in smaller for the camera or, or, or just being smaller, being not as dramatic and, and as outside of yourself as you maybe could be on stage. But um and string theory and all this other, all this other garbage. But I, cause I think it really just boils down to telling the truth. And, and, mm. and that's kind of what I always say for, for that question. It's like, my acting doesn't really change. And my approach to a character doesn't change. Um, the character for, for stage or for the screen, it's, it's all just how, how that actor dives into it. Mm. And, um, and the performances, is the same if you're telling the truth you're telling the truth um that's what i always say yeah that's a great answer and when you look at your career as a whole who or what has had the biggest influence either personally or professionally yeah um i mean my education has been the biggest part for me of just growth and um continued growth so in school i had i had really great teachers um mark brotherton uh he he just passed away. He was a, he was a great teacher of mine. Um, I would sit in his office and just listen to him, like recite Shakespeare <laughs> like <laughs> for hours <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, a couple other teachers, David Reed, um, it, outside of, outside of school, I've, I've gotten with an acting coach who has taught me of how to really hold reverence for this thing that we do this storytelling and, and every story that comes from anyone is, is their own, unique experience and and our job as actors is to to hold that with the weight that it deserves and um listening to him and and getting teaching from him russ blackwell is has been amazing um professionally last year i got to work with john wells um really closely um as a lead and and his pilot um canary road and um and whew, that man is a wealth of knowledge um, just about the industry and, and acting and, and, and general and, and our approach to a character. Um, so I learned a lot from him through that experience. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just always looking for, for any nuggets of wisdom from people who have been doing it longer than I, right? <laughs> Beautifully said. You've got a recurring role now on American Born Chinese. How did this project initially come across your desk? And what was it about the script that resonated with you? Yeah, American Born Chinese was was um, it was brought to me by Leslie Wu, who who was a casting director that um, that I worked with for Kenyu Road, the pilot, and mm. then shortly after I, that had wrapped, she she brought this to the table, and um, and I, at first uh, I saw the director attached, Destin, and um, his film Short Term Twelve has like always been one of my favorites to pull from as far as like human experience and acting and. Um, so I was super stoked for, for the people involved. And, um, and then I read the book and I saw, I saw Greg, like the character of Greg in the book. And, um, 
and it's every every actor's dream to bring a comic book character to life, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and then diving into it, just the message of, of giving kids who feel isolated a voice, um, that, that resonated with me. Um, just, just to, yeah, to give them a voice to, to empower them to be themselves and, and be different. And, um, and yeah, that, that was, it, it was, it was so great. It was all, uh, combination of amazing things that that all worked out perfectly and i I couldn't be more happier with it definitely you know and in addition to acting you're also a musician and music is such a huge component in your your dna as a storyteller and artist how much do you leverage that when you're preparing for a role or a scene um yeah i mean i'm I'm a guitarist and uh, a singer first and um that was always what i'd love to do but but i just love music and i love um love the mood that it can put you in different types yeah. of music. And um, so Spotify playlists are huge for me for preparing for a character. Um, I have lots of Spotify playlists <laughs> <laughs> and a, a unique one for each character. And um, it, it's fun just, just kind of delving into when you're, when I'm doing my character work of like, Oh, like what does this character actually listen to? And, and then, and that, that's all like, up to me as the actor so that's like your own little input um artistically i guess um but yeah i recognize the weight that that music can bring to to anything and um so yeah spotify playlists (laughs) do you remember what was on greg's playlist um there was a lot of i think there was a lot of like some drake some Mm. uh some hype (laughs) up like like john man songs <laughs> you know varsity varsity captain songs <laughs> and, and you know greg's purpose and his narrative is really to drive home Jin's hero's journey but as an actor who's playing this character and who lives in this morally great era you have to approach him with no judgment how did you create this space and freedom for yourself to dive into greg's arc and what kind of backstory did you create for him yeah yeah no judgment is is huge for any character that that I play and any character that anybody plays that you have, you always have to approach it. Like, like you said, no judgment. Um, I love playing, playing characters that have all those different levels to them. Um, And, and playing a character like Greg, who's part of the problem Mm. was, was difficult to approach, but when you approach it from, from um, like, ignorance like it not knowing any better um for for me as myself it, it's i can pass judgment on that but f- approaching the character like you said you can't so um i always try and find the, the different layers because i feel like any character you play always has some kind of heart yeah. in them somewhere right and and no matter how lost that person is or how ignorant that person is there's always um, some heart to it, and that's how you find that humanity. So, yeah, yeah, it was it was a it was a, it was a cool role to uh, to to dive into. Yeah. I had a lot of fun with it. Definitely, and you know, the series is out now on Disney Plus. It's been incredibly well received. I think you were at the New York premiere. You've gotten to see firsthand how impactful this story has been. What do you think is resonating most with audiences, and what do you hope they take away? What resonated the most with me was the the family dynamic. Um, and, and seeing Jin being in his room and and hearing his parents fight behind and not really being able to understand what they're saying. I didn't grow up in, in a bilingual household like that, but I, I, they told it in a way that, that I felt for him Mm. so sincerely. And, um, I think that that will resonate with, with anybody who grows up in that household, but like it did for me, not even coming from that experience, just, um, the education and the awareness of, of what it would be like to, to grow up in that situation. And, uh, the, the magic and the fighting is just pretty freaking cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. all the layers to it just makes it, makes it a really amazing project, but yeah, that was what resonated for me. And I think that that is a good consensus all around. Yeah. And if we're lucky enough to get a second season, where would you like to see Greg's storyline head? Yeah, it's interesting in the book because 
the Greg's younger version of himself starts out with with a little bit more care for for Jin, and then and then you see him later on um, as they get older. Um, he is assimilating into the crowd and and being being the cool jock that he is. And um, same thing in, in the series, um, mentioning that that I just did it to make all the other all the other varsity guys laugh. And um, so I'd like to see I'd like to see Greg come around um, and 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 really start to pay attention to to how his actions affect other people. Um, towards the end of that of that second episode, I think um, I, for me, and I, I don't know if it played across to the camera, I was really trying to um, to see those wheels turning for Greg. Yeah. Uh, of like I, he knows he messed up, and and not just for for himself not being able to play some games this season, too. Um, but but the education all around for um, educating ignorance and. Um, I'd like to see Greg come around. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it came across really well on screen. Greg is like one of those characters that you you hope has a redemption arc in in the future. Yeah. And then outside of this, this is one of your your biggest projects to date. Did anything surprise you about the overall experience? What was the biggest takeaway thus far? Um, I'm very new to this. <laughs> like I said I, I I graduated from from college in 2020, and. Um, with my degree in theater and right in the middle of COVID and there was no theater happening at all. So yeah. it was, it was a quick turnaround for me to find where I wanted to be. And, um, I got really great opportunities straight out the gate with, in, in screen work. And, um, so every new experience that I have, every, every single, every single time I've been on set has been with a different team and a very new experience. And I'm just, enjoying the process of learning. I mean, I definitely have like some moments where I'm like, do I know what I'm doing at all? And then, and then just relying back on the, on, um, my training and, and, um, just storytelling. That's all it is. Um, but yeah, it's the, everything's a surprise, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I just love learning from it. Wow. I have one final question for you. Outside of this project, what's next for you? And as you look ahead to maybe the next five, 10 years, is there a dream role that you would love to bring to life on the screen? Yeah. Or stage? I, I don't even know if it's written yet, but um, mm. I, I just, I, I love being surprised, I guess. Um, I'm, I'm really drawn to those, those films in the independent genre um, that explore humanity and explore how we relate as humans to each other. Um, and for me, I just want to tell stories like that, that, that teach and that inspire people and that offer uh, some sort of healing um, mm -hmm. people. And so if there's a role that does all three of those things, I'm, I'm on board. Um, <laughs> I spent a, a lot of the past two years in Hawaii and i um, surfing is is very important to me <laughs> um it's uh kind of an addiction but <laughs> um I'd, I'd love to to be able to share a story about surfing and what it's mm. what it means to me and what it means to a lot of people um too i've been doing a lot of thinking about that um hollywood hasn't been able to get surfing right so far yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if um i can bring that but i'd like to be a part of it <laughs>